This viscast will look at a problem using a circuit containing a resistor and an inductor in series with a voltage source, an RL circuit. Pause the video and read through the question carefully. Now that you've read through the question, we can begin the solution by interpreting what's happening in this particular problem. We can see we have an inductor in this circuit. That's going to be important because we're dealing with issues to do with the current that's going to flow in the circuit, the maximum current and a current value at a particular time. Important to understand is that with an inductor in the circuit, the current cannot change instantaneously. There's going to be some time scale upon which the current can change. That's going to be crucial to us understanding what's happening. So moving on to our develop stage, we already have a diagram. It might be useful to annotate our diagram with the appropriate values. And we need to recall something about how current varies in a circuit that contains a resistor and an inductor. Either by returning to lecture notes or looking up in a textbook for the derivation, we should recall that the current that will flow through our circuit is given by the applied EMF, in this case it's the voltage on the battery, divided by the resistance, multiplied by a term that tells us how this varies in time. 1 minus E to the minus R over L, all multiplied by the time. And if we were to look at this graphically, what this would look like is our current in the circuit as a function of time here. Uh, at time equals 0, this exponential function e to the minus something times 0 is going to give us 1. So at time 0, the current is in fact 0. That's time as the switch is closed. And then as time goes on, this exponential uh, factor here becomes smaller and smaller. And so our current increases in a manner like that, approaching some maximum value as t goes to infinity. This exponential term becomes zero and we're left here essentially with our maximum being the applied EMF divided by the resistance. An important feature that you might recall is that the time when this uh, this factor at the top of our exp exponential here goes to 1. That's our time constant tau, which is when our time equals L divided by R. In that case there, we've got the situation where after one time constant, we're actually at approximately 0.63 of our maximum current flow. That's after one time constant. This becomes 1 minus 1 over E, which is about 63% of the final value. We're also asked in this question something about the rate of increase of stored magnetic energy. So it's worth remembering in our development stage here that the magnetic energy stored in an inductor is given by a half the inductance times the square of the current. And so we might be wanting to know something about the time rate of change of that energy in the magnetic field. And so we'll need to think about the time derivative. Half is a constant. The inductance L is a constant, but of course we can see I, the current, is going to be changing with time. So when we apply our, our rules for taking a derivative there, we're going to get L times 2I, so that cancels that half there, times dI by dt. And that will be important for us to answer part C of this question. With a bit more space here, we can start our evaluation step of our solution. Let's begin with part A where it's asking us for the maximum current that will flow. And we can see from our graph or from the equation that we know that relates current here that we'll get this maximum current when t has become a very large value, when t becomes very large. And that tells us that this current here will be when this exponential term here goes to zero. So that will just be the applied EMF divided by the resistance to 1 minus 0 at very large times, which is simply the applied EMF divided by the resistance. In our case, that's a 15 volt EMF divided by a 33 ohm resistance, which gives us 0 0.45 of an amp. So that's the maximum current at some very long time after the switch is closed. Uh, we would have about 0.45 of an amp flowing. 
for part B, how long does it take for the current to reach half that value? So now we want to have a current equal to a half of I max. We can see from our expression for current that I max is this applied EMF divided by the resistance. So that tells us we really want 1 minus the e to the minus r over l times t. We want that factor there to actually equal a half. And that of course also means we really want this exponential term to equal a half. Now we can take the, the log of both sides of this, say so take the natural log which brings the exponent here down, so we've got minus r over l times t will equal the natural log of a half, or rearranging that the time that we're looking for here will be minus the inductance divided by the resistance times the natural log of a half. This might concern you a little that there's a negative sign out the front until you remember that the natural log of a half is actually going to be a negative quantity and you put the various values in there so L here will be 250 millihenries, um, R will be 33 ohms and we wind up with the number here that turns out to be 5.3 milliseconds. That's the time after the closing of the switch at which the current will have risen to half its maximum value. Now the last part of this question is kind of interesting. It's asking us to find the rate of increase of the stored magnetic energy. And the energy, as we've put up here in our development stage, depends upon the square of the current. And we can see the current is changing, the current is increasing. So the amount of energy being stored in that inductor must be increasing as well. So let's see if we can figure that calculation here. We really want a du by dt, which we saw in our development stage will be li times di dt. And so it's this di dt that I'm kind of interested in determining here. That's going to be d by dt of our expression up here for current of the applied EMF divided by the resistance into 1 minus e to the minus r over l times t. And most of these things here are constants, except the time dependence in this exponential function here. And you should be able to go through and apply your uh, rules for, for taking derivatives. Um, to determine that this is actually going to be uh, the applied EMF divided by R multiplied by the resistance divided by the inductance that's bringing down the exponent there, that minus E to the minus R over LT. I bring down a minus R over L and the minus signs give me a plus sign there um, and I'm left with my exponent E to the minus R over L times T and you can see my resistance actually cancels there and so I can write this most simply as the applied EMF divided by the inductance E to the minus R over L multiplied by time. So now my time rate of change of stored magnetic energy is going to be L times I times that applied EMF over L E to the minus R over L multiplied by time. And again we can see that that inductance actually cancels out. I need to evaluate this when that current is a half of the maximum current. That's what the question is asking me. And I know at that particular time that this exponential term, calculated in, in part b here, must be equal to a half. So my final calculation here turns out to be reasonably simple. It's a half of the current times the applied EMF which will be a half of the current. Remember, it's half the maximum current, so it's going to be a half times my 0.45 amps over 2 times my applied EMF, which was 15 volts. And when I do that calculation, um, I wind up with a number of 1.7. And I better make sure my units, I've done everything in terms of amps and volts. So this will be my unit for the rate of change of energy, which will be a power, which is in watts. So there's my answer for part C. The stored magne magnetic energy is changing at a rate of 1.7 joules per second, or 1.7 watts. I should be able to do a quick assess step here. Uh, assessing part A uh, is kind of straightforward. I understand that my maximum uh, current is going to occur essentially when the effect of the inductance has died away. That is that my inductor is now pretty much behaving like a straight wire. 
remember when an inductor is first switched on it behaves like an open circuit that's why I had no current flowing initially but after a very long time my inductor behaves uh, like a short circuit and so my maximum current would simply be what would flow through the particular resistance with a particular voltage so it was just essentially Ohm's law the uh, the voltage divided by the resistance let's just double checking that part B makes sense um, we found here that for I to equal a half of I max it took a time of about 5.3 milliseconds now let's compare that to our time constant which remember is L over R which in this case is 250 millihenries divided by 33 ohms and that comes out uh, to be 7.6 milliseconds to get to the time constant we ended up being about 63 percent of the maximum so to get to 50 percent of the maximum it should take a little bit less time and indeed it is 5.3 milliseconds is just a bit less than my 7.6 milliseconds so in terms of, of orders of magnitude and the relative sizes of things here that seems to check out pretty well can we do a quick check on our calculation in part C one thing we can think about is the total amount of power supplied by a voltage source a voltage source has a voltage of V supplying a current of I and that's the rate at which our battery is supplying power to the circuit uh, it's a 15 volt battery and remember we were at half the maximum current so that was our 0.45 amps over 2 when we do that calculation we wind up with a number of 3.4 watts which is more power than was being stored was being used to store energy in our inductor so it's good that at least it's not less we couldn't be getting more power being stored in our magnetic field than the battery was supplying that's where the, bat the power is coming from but it's more in fact it's more by a factor of two here you can see we got 1.7 watts was the rate at which energy was being stored in the inductor but the battery was supplying energy at a rate of 3.4 watts where's that extra energy going was that extra power being used and of course we can think about the power being dissipated in our resistor and that one way to write that is it's the square of the current through the resistor multiplied by the resistance and that's going to be half our maximum current again squared times our 33 ohms and when we do that calculation quite nicely we find that gives us 1.7 watts so in this particular example at this particular time when the current is half the maximum current we can see the total power supplied by the battery half of it is being dissipated by the resistor the current flowing through the resistor and half of it is being stored as magnetic energy in the inductor